Welcome to the 7v7 Organization Guide for BYSA. In this guide, we'll talk about the basic format of the 7v7 game and how BYSA would like to set up our teams for playing. BYSA plays a 1-2-3-1 formation as their basic shape of the 7v7 game format. Numbering systems in soccer always start with the goalkeeper, so the 1, then the number of defenders, the number of midfielders, and finally the number of attackers. As teams become more advanced, these roles will shift a little bit, and in defense, this can sometimes look like a 1-3-2-1, sometimes called Christmas tree shape, for obvious reasons. In attack, this can also look more like a 1-2-1-3, or even a 1-1-2-3 if one's pressing for a goal. The movements of the players in transition between defense and attack, attack to defense, dictate the eventual shape a team may play in the natural flow of the game. But it's the understanding of the roles and responsibilities of the numbering system that ultimately what determines how the players react and organize to any given situation in different parts of the field. Obviously, beginning teams will be more rigid in their structure, sticking to the 1-2-3-1 format as they move up and down the field. But as they become more advanced, They'll show more variation as they understand their roles and relationships between the players. In these next following slides, we'll look at the formation as it moves up the field. Here, this is the basic shape of a 1-2-3-1 as the team prepares to restart from a goal kick. You can see pretty clearly the one with the goalkeeper, the two center backs, the three midfielders across the middle of the field, and the number nine, the striker, up top. As the play moves up the field, it still looks like a 1-2-3-1 as we now stretch the field from sideline to sideline, making the field big. The 7 and the 11 are starting to push on, getting closer to the 9, and we'll see that in the next slide. But note that the 4 and 5 are moving up the field to support the 8, making a triangle in the middle of the field. This gives you defensive stability in case the ball is lost in transition, but also it gives the 8 an opportunity to pass the ball backwards if met with opposition. For example, perhaps the 8 passes the ball back to the 4, who then has an easy pass to spray the ball out to the number 7 as they move up the field. The 7 and the 11 stay nice and wide to make the field as big as possible as they move up to make it difficult for the opposition to cover all the passing angles. In this slide, now you can see that the team is now into the attacking third of the field, and it's kind of morphed now into a 1-2-1-3, one, one, as the 7 and the 11 have joined the 9 at the edge of the box as they look to penetrate and score a goal. It's important to note that the defenders have moved up the field, at least to the halfway line, as they really need to be part of the play in attack and defense. The 4 right now is providing support to the 7, that if they need to be there for an option, they could pass the ball back to the 4 and perhaps recycle the ball around to the 5 and out to the other side to the 11. Or, if the 7 loses the ball, the 4 and the 8 are close enough that they can try to counterpress the other team to win the ball back as fast as possible, or at least delay the attack so the rest of your team can start to head back to defensive positions. It's also important to note that the goalkeeper is not standing inside their goal. They've moved up, preferably at least to the top of their box, if not further. If a ball gets knocked over the top of the 4 and the 5 into that space, it's an easy jog up for a goalkeeper who's well positioned to sweep up that danger, knock the ball forward, and restart the attack. Finally, you can see what the formation might look like in the defensive third. You can see the 4 and the 5 are central with the eight tucked in to make a strong core in the middle of the field, the most dangerous part. The seven and the eleven have also tucked in and their job is to provide additional support and chase players out to the wide touch line so that the four, five, and eight can remain central and in position. Lastly, the nine should remain high up the field on side and move from side to side to whatever side the ball is located. They are the outlet, so if the ball is won, they're the first option to receive a pass to restart the counterattack. For example, if the ball is in the corner with the 7, the 9 should be slid across the center line so that they become an easy outlet pass for the 7 if they win the ball to relieve pressure and stop the attack going the other way. In review, the 1-2-3-1 one, one is fluid as it moves up and down the field, but the functions of the players dictate their roles as the game moves on. 
In general, when your team has possession, the goal is to make the field big, spreading out to make the spaces between players large, making it hard for the other team to cover all the options. As you've seen in the previous slides, there are plenty of triangles and diamonds in the 1-2-3-1 formation for players to have options in almost all directions to pass the ball. In defending, the goal is to make the field small. Compact the spaces between players in the center part of the field to make it difficult for passers and players to move with the ball towards the most dangerous areas in front of your net. Lastly, it is important to teach the roles associated with the numbering system. The numbering system is a United States national standard, it's actually a world standard, and over time will provide players with the clues on their role or their job in the field with a minimum of words. For example, in the 11v11 game, a number 6 is a defensive midfielder. As we've seen in the 7v7 game, a number 8 is a center midfielder, otherwise referred to as a box-to-box -box midfielder, because they have to get up and down in both attack and defense. If, in the middle of the game, you need to have a little bit more defensive stability, it is easy to yell out to a player to tell them that they need to be a number 6 for a little while. It conveys a lot of information with very few words that can be communicated across large distances pretty effectively. We hope that this overview helps you as you begin to teach our players how to play in the 7v7 game. Thank you and have a great day.